My name is Lucy Thorpe and I live at the foot of Slave Gullion. Slave Gullion was formed millions and millions of years ago by fire and ice. It is one of our most magical mountains. There are many legends surrounding Slave Gullion. It has taken a very long time for the mountain to become what it is today. For the rocks to form and the trees and rare and special plants to grow. Life was so simple then it seemed to me so slow. People come to Slave Gullion to climb, run, walk, exercise, to rest and escape from their everyday lives. Many people have also lived on the mountain, but not so many live here now. People's lives and traditions have changed a lot faster than the mountain has. There are so many old houses now left empty, Many lived in one or two bedroom cottages like these. They cooked by the fire and the children usually slept all in the same bed to keep warm. The people have moved on and things have changed but the memories aren't gone. This is a very old fireplace in a very old house behind my house. This fireplace was used for cooking every meal with big pots and pans and pans. And the, the fireplace was used for many other things, such as iron. They had their iron and they placed it over the fire to heat it up. And then they smoothed out their clothes. People's homes were so important. Babies were born in their homes. They socialised in their homes. Storytellers came and entertained people in their homes. And when they died, they were also waked in their homes. This is where my great grandparents and their neighbours came to wash their clothing and their pots and pans. The path that leads to the river passes a mass rock facing the field known as the Chanko. This means Old Church in Irish. The mass rock is a large flat stone which was used as an altar to perform religious services at the time the English made practicing Catholic religion illegal. People would disobey the law and hold their ceremonies in secret at the mass rock. Beneath the shankle is a sutron, a small cave where the priest could hide from the British soldiers, but that was 300 years ago. Now we can go to mass whenever we like. Farming has also changed quite a lot. In this picture taken in the 1920s, the local men of Clochinia have come together to thresh the wheat. Every neighbour helped each other. They worked together and had lunch together and stayed in the fields until the work was done. Nowadays, farming is done mostly by machinery, by the farmer themselves or a contractor. This is my grand Annie in his tractor. Hello Lucy. This is my great granddad Paddy Murphy having his lunch in the field. He was a shopkeeper, a farmer and an undertaker. His shop is closed now, but once you could buy groceries, sweets, welly boots, buckets, chains, shovels and many many more things. People came to socialise and drink bottles of stout in his parlour. This is known as a shebeen. My nanny Josie remembers Michael J. Murphy telling stories in his parlour. Stories of banshees, ghosts, priests and foolish people. Thank you for listening to me about our changing times and remember your stories, keep them well 
A memory forgotten you can never retell.